Hey, hi guys, welcome to Cafe IU. Cafe IU में आपका स्वागत है. Today I am going to be talking about Keras 3, the latest version of the popular deep learning library. Now Keras 3 is a new major update that brings a large number of features and improvement. If we go and look at history of Keras, Keras 2 was in you know released in or Keras was released in March 2015, and then in 2017 in March they released Keras 2 and if you think about it the first two versions came really quickly but now the third version it's almost good six years when we talk about it traditionally they started with uh, you know good consistency with TensorFlow because it the goal was to kind of align with uh, TensorFlow APIs and all of the code base that TensorFlow for us so that's what uh, you know they were trying to align so that was the original goal and then initially they did some few changes but now what has happened is they have completely rewritten the uh, Keras library and it enables us to run workflows on top of either Jax, TensorFlow and PyTorch which is you know probably the three uh, best of uh, libraries out there for deep learning. So we have support for multiple backends which is what I just spoke. There's a new distribution API which includes uh, the ability to train models on multiple GPUs and TPUs and that's probably going to be a great advantage as the large models conversation evolves. There's a completely new stateless API which we'll probably look in a minute, in a while and uh, the idea is that JAX is something that uh, supports a lot of stateless functions. And uh, when you have new Keras APIs, it's now, it enables you to have new stateless APIs that will make it possible to use Keras layers and models in JAX function. And finally, it's, uh, you know, really truly cross platform, data platform, data pipelines and stuff like that. So you can work with tf.data, PyTorch, data loader or NumPy arrays and stuff like that. So in a nutshell, uh, apart from the, uh, larger integration that they have shown with major libraries there's good performance improvements a lot of error messages improvement and consistent apis which essentially translates to great flexibility ease of use and performance within the library so that's a quick high level view let's just get started click on get started and i'm going to hop between a couple of different links trying to talk about it so when you click get started, you should be able to see do a pip install Keras and you should be able to see the version. You will also need to install the different backends and additionally, if you want to use CV and NLP, uh, which is covered under Keras.applications where you have uh, the you know NLP and CV base models that you want to leverage. So you'll have to do these installations. Furthermore, if you're trying to uh, do some GPUs related stuff so you would want to have you you'll essentially need to complete the backend specific requirements for example for tensorflow it's documented couple of uh, different parts uh, it's, it's pretty well documented you should be able to get started and uh, when you configure it you just need to set something like an environment variable which is keras backend and uh, effectively that holds three values tensorflow jacks or torch and once you do that, you should be able to have that, uh, you know, the base environment set. There is very strong backward compatibility also. However, you cannot run uh, tensor, the, the, the Keras 2 library and Keras 3 library side by side. That's probably something to be aware of. They have given a compatibility matrix as to what version it supports and uh, the specifics around it. Obviously, JAX is the newer entrant. So only the latest version but while tensorflow is uh, you know largely supported and the same with pytorch i don't think they were supporting pytorch before so that's the getting started guide let's dig a little deeper or let's just probably branch a little bit and talk about the core libraries that we are interacting now tensorflow as most of you know is a google product it comes from the house of google has been around forever and is a great production learn great machine learning library uh, that you have they have different sites to it they have the machine learning part they have deployments they have tf light have a lot of support for on device stuff like androids you can do mlops it's it's pretty complete library 
on its own it would not be a, a good idea to call it just a machine learning library jax is more of a, a i would say high performance array computing library that's what the uh, definition is which means is that it it enables auto grad and automated differentiation of different functions so essentially if you have some code base and you want to do differentiation or you want to achieve some kind of let's say back propagation by writing custom code jax is probably the best way i think i di did read it somewhere that uh, yeah here so in the benchmarks they found jax typically delivers the best training and inference performance on gpu cpu and uh, tpu all of them alike uh, but yeah that's uh, very subjective i think depending on who's doing and what's the goal etc we have just talked about uh, multi framework machine learning i think this is a good area to get into now because uh, all of these libraries are evolving at very nice rates and it, having a top level wrapper will make the life of developers much easier and you'll have to learn lesser libraries so that's a good thing nevertheless you will still need to know the base libraries to be able to actually use them but uh, having a very standard api and uh, being able to interop between multiple libraries can be a game changer all right let's move on jacks we've talked and pytorch also uh, you know is very famous from the house of facebook and uh, they have also been maturing nice i think uh, the research community and a large large group of data scientists prefer there's usually a you know war going on between who has better apis either tensorflow or pytorch i hope they can settle with keras now so that those are the three libraries that this is talking uh, i'll just skim through the core of this uh, you know release so that you don't have to read through it so this talks about the multi framework machine learning which is essentially uh, enabling all of the three libraries then you have very standard code base if you uh, if you see essentially the same code base is going to is should be able to run across the three different libraries so if you are not somebody if you are uh, you know a newbie in this space or if you are just trying to uh, pilot or maybe experiment with multiple libraries or multiple models that are library specific this could be a great way to go uh, you can also do a lot of multi framework models integrations and stuff like that you can do custom components from keras.ops library and the ops library is really interesting what they have done is they have core numpy ops which is essentially uh, not numpy like but the numpy operations all of the numpy operations uh, that you have you have that available here you have neural network specific operations you, and then you have some core operations and then image and fft operations fft i think is fast fourier yeah fft is fast fourier uh so that's what uh, this ops api is and that's uh, using this you can do again interop between any framework uh, across the three frameworks that you have you can also use these frameworks for backend specific components for example if you want something which is nice in tensorflow you can use that jax you can use that and likewise you know pytorch and again the the goal is it will show you that uh, how it easy it is to interop and do stuff like that uh, they have shown good examples of how you can write custom training loops using all of the different three there's a good distribution api which uh, essentially is parallelization and that's really neat uh, eff effectively you can do data parallelization and model parallelization also in this which is a very very good thing i'm yet to try it but i think this will be good and uh, so effectively this simple line of code can uh, distribute model training op operations across a large number of devices which is super nice uh, you have a lot of pre trained models like 40 uh, all 40 keras dot applications uh, in all backends so basically you can use uh, all of these base models across the different libraries if you want to and uh, the cv and nlp specific model which is what i talked about originally in the installation also work with most backends i think they have some sort of uh, list to to give an example of that you all there, there's a good uh, the data exchange uh, the data pipeline which is the tf.data or torch.utils.data 
essentially now you can uh, or also or for that matter numpy or pandas data frames you can work with keras.utils.py data but now you can all uh, you can use any of that and keras tree models can be trained uh, across a variety of that so which means if your data is in a certain format uh, or you are bringing in code from this libraries it will work without a hitch uh there is good uh i think they have talked about a design principle which is progressive disclosure of complexity so uh, essentially it says that you don't need to follow a single way of doing it and you can essentially follow uh, uh let's say a very base high level way or a high level approach which could be you know as i showed up top which is something like i'll say this which is a very high level code or you could do something very custom which is uh, you know framework specific and leverages each uh, library's benefit so that would uh, essentially be like a very low level corresponding to different profiles of the different libraries so uh, that's effectively what this is talking about so uh, the idea is that you don't uh, while it is offering you a good amount of flexibility you don't need to essentially be boggled down with it or uh, follow a certain way you can you know pick and choose the way you like then there's a stateless apis for layers model matrix uh, essentially this is geared towards jax because jax effectively uh, follows a lot of stateless stuff and uh, this is also a little bit on the direction of functional programming if you're moving from keras 2 to 3 they have a good degree of backward compatibility uh, specifically with if you're using tensorflow or based tf.keras or stuff like that so that's essentially uh, what this talks about and then there's some faqs which is is keras 3 compatible uh, largely yes uh, but uh, again keras 3 with the tensorflow backend of course others would not be the slight differences but they have covered the migration guide do pre-trained legacy models uh, in legacy keras to work with keras 3 yes in general they will work pretty much out of the box yeah, you can just save it in a different format like keras v3 format and uh, that's that's pretty much it uh, you can see keras model in one backend and reload to other yes you can so uh, which means that uh, if you are saving a tensorflow model and i think this is something they shouldn't have put in faq they should have put in uh, much above so uh, if you have something like model.keras file you can use that as a framework agnostic and uh, but if you have some custom components uh, you better be using keras.ops and stuff like that uh, can i use keras3 components inside uh, tf.data pipeline yes you can uh, all data pipelines are supported and uh, will models behave the same way with different backends ideally they should be but there would uh, also be some sort of implications like floating point implications how you are doing i don't know what this is but it says due to lack of support for average pooling with asymmetric padding in pytorch uh, this has some sort of gap uh, so yeah this is something you should read probably distributed training definitely yes possible uh, it's also supported out of the box with JAX, uh, it's also supported with TensorFlow with PyTorch. Uh, you can just use this like distributed parallel, and it will do that. Uh, if you do TF dot distribute with TensorFlow, it will do the distribution. And uh, <clears throat> yeah, uh, they are open to adding new backends, uh, but uh, I don't know how what backend would they want to do there's a talk about uh, a backend written in mojo which is a library i have it, it's probably another machine learning library i have never uh, used it but uh, by the looks of it it looks uh, the website is nice uh, with the outside of that i can't make a comment yeah they probably would want to add more libraries and frameworks in the future but that's also something which is not defined yet so that's essentially a uh, monologue around keras uh, thank you for watching if you have stuck for so long please subscribe to my channel bye bye